So before I jump into the NetLogo version of this uh, model, the L4L bar problem, I want to talk a little bit about how the NetLogo version actually works, because it's not exactly the same as what um, Brian Arthur originally proposed. Um, the version here is actually influenced and uh, um, you know, kind of inspired by a later paper that was written by Dave Fogel and colleagues uh, in 1999 called Deductive Reasoning and Bounded Rationality Reconsidered. Um, and, you know, in Brian Arthur's original paper, he kind of makes this offhanded remark at the end that um, he expects the results of his model to be very similar if the agents were using a machine learning algorithm such as a genetic algorithm to control the heuristics that they were using to choose to predict uh, the the strategy the, the attendance at each week right um, and so Fogel and colleagues decided to look into this but they wanted a way to formalize this a little bit so rather than having a, a bag of strategies that were kind of uh, heuristically generated they basically came up with a formulation of a way to wait past weeks in order to make a prediction about the future week, right? And so this is necessary in some respects because if you want to just randomly generate a bunch of agents, you don't want to sit there writing down all these heuristic rules. So instead, we, we generated a formula for that. So in the NetLogo version, we use a similar kind of mindset. So each agent has a memory of the past T weeks. Um, and when the model first starts up, that memory is actually randomly seeded as if, you know, because we don't actually know what the um, past was before that. And then they each have a set of n strategies of the form ATXT plus AT minus 1 times XT minus 1. In other words, they take the, pre the past 10, the past T weeks of attendance, multiply them by some weight and then add on a constant term as well. And so the strategy is actually defined uh, by these A's. Um, and the agent then can then take that each of these strategies and say, if I had applied it in the past, say, five weeks, what, how well would it have predicted? So I can determine the predicted attendance and the actual attendance. And then I can start to use the least erring strategy to predict the attendance uh, for the next week, and if it's less than 60, less than or equal to 60, I will go. If it's greater than 60, I, I won't go, right? Basically, it's the way the strategy works. So that's the basic idea behind uh, the NetLogo version. Um, it's kind of just a formalization of Brian Arthur's original problem. Um, but now that you know that, it helps to understand the model a little bit. So we'll now start uh, to look at the model. So here we have the actual L4All uh, model loaded into NetLogo. Um, and I've actually run it a little bit, so you can see that we have some attendance and some fluctuations. And you'll see that you have basically three parameters to the model. You have a memory size, which is how many weeks past the agents remember uh, the attendance history. You have the number of strategies uh, that each agent uh, possesses. And so, as I said, these are kind of algorithmically generated uh, from that series of weights, uh, right? And you have an overcrowding threshold, right? Um, and, you know, the traditional value for this is 60. Uh, that was what Brian Arthur originally proposed, but you can set it up however you want. And here's the actual world, and there's a green space which is supposed to indicate outside the bar, and then for whatever reason, the bar is indicated by this blue space. I actually uh, helped build this model back when, you know, when I first uh, became part of the uh, NetLogo Models Library, so I did a lot of this creation myself. Uh, so if you hit um, Setup, you'll see that the world starts with no one in the bar, and then let's see, we can just run it one tick. Sometimes that's useful. Uh, to do and rather than hitting the go button, I'll just type go into the command center, right? Um, and as you can see, it says that the bar is crowded. And in fact, this red line on the plot is showing the bar attendance at 60. And you can see that it's barely above that. And if I go again, the next time it's not crowded, it doesn't say crowded. And in fact, the line's below 60, right? Um, and so then I can hit the run button or the go button and let it continue to execute a few more times in a row. And as you can tell, it kind of stabilizes, as Brian Arthur um, argued, around 60, right? Um, so indicating that even with these kind of very simple rules, agents can kind of achieve a somewhat, um, quote unquote, socially optimal behavior uh, in terms of their use of the, of the bar, right? 
So as you're playing around with the L for all bar problem, you might realize that it does a very good job right now of kind of visualizing some important data about the bar problem itself, right? It shows you which, uh, how many individuals are in the bar, how many aren't in the bar. It shows you what the average attendance is. Um, so it shows you most of the main points that the original Brian Arthur paper uh, mentioned. However, it doesn't tell you anything about the individuals, right? It doesn't tell you are some of the individuals better at attending the bar than others, right? Do they go in times when it's less crowded? Um, and it doesn't tell you like who does like what how's the best you can possibly do and what's the average uh, amount of attendance when it's uncrowded in uh, at the bar as opposed to the average attendance all the time. Right. And then, you know, there's also an interesting question about equality. Right. So do some individuals, are they really good at attending the bar when it's uncrowded or is it more equally distributed across all uh, the individuals who are going to and from the bar? And so these are questions you might ask. You might see a model and you might just be curious about and you might decide to investigate that in, more question, in detail. And over the next couple of subunits, what we're going to be doing is showing you how to extend this model uh, to investigate those questions. So that's it for today and I'll see you soon.